So hi everyone, today we're going to learn CAD with Onshape. We're going to be building a, a phone mount, a MagSafe phone mount that I think will be useful to you guys and you can follow along or you can just um, uh, just watch me do it and hopefully some of the CAD files will be available to you to download and you know print it yourself and build it yourself but hopefully you get to learn a bit more on how to build it your, yourself in CAD and build your own and 3D print some of the parts yourself. We're going to be making everything on Onshape, but a lot of the lessons are applicable to basically any other CAD software. Uh, at Apple, we used uh, I used to use NX, which is a Siemens uh, CAD software. This is Onshape. I love it. It's online. It's on. It's on the browser, so you can literally use it on any computer you want. And for students, it's free. And for hobbyists, it's also free. But your parts are public. Cool. Let's get started. So. I was saying that we're going to make a MagSafe phone mount, and and so, uh, and I was saying thinking we can make it mostly 3D printed, but we'll talk a little bit about different materials that we can use during that time. So just to start, what I'd what I do is okay. Let's take a look at what MagSafe magnet dimensions are. And why I do that is okay. Let's see if we have any like drawings and like kind of specs that we can use. So for example, you can see this. This is cool because now we can use this to start to give us a basic idea of our magnets and, and like the dimensions they have so that we can start building a baseline. So if you look here, it looks like it's uh, 40, uh, 46 millimeter and 54 millimeter. So I the inner diameter is 46 millimeter. The outer diameter is 54.1 millimeters. And then the thickness is six millimeters. So we can go here and we can get started by using this maybe as our as our rough magnet dimension. This is important because then we're going to start to um, see uh, how everything kind of works out or how, how all the shapes kind of stack up. So that's that. So it's 54.1 and 46. So 54.1 and then this is 46. Cool. So that's our magnet. Awesome. So did you see what I did there? So walking you through, I clicked on sketch. When I clicked on sketch, then I selected the plane I want to sketch on. I selected the front plane because I'm assuming that's where my phone is going to attach to because we're making a MagSafe phone mount. So I'm attaching normal to like me. So I'm using the front plane. And then I sketch the two circles on the front plane. So showing again, I'll walk through it one more time real quick. I selected sketch, I selected front plane. And then right as I did that, I went to the circle tool. I clicked on the center as to give me a nice like central point to use as my baseline. And I clicked, you know, somewhere random and then I clicked a second one somewhere random. And then I used the measure tool, which is right here, up here, or the dimension tool, or you can use the hot key letter D that brings it up as well. And so that's a really nice shortcut. Just remember D is for dimension. And then you can use that to dimension the the line uh, the circle and then i quickly just typed in the dimensions cool now that i have that dimensions i can go to extrude because you'll see that there's a third dimension here this is the thickness of it it is six millimeters here and so let's come here let's go and extrude and we're going to extrude it out and so extrusion is basically pulling that 2d uh, curve or to the 2d sketch out into the third dimension cool so there we go that is my MagSafe magnet. All right. At this point, I can call it something. I can rename this to MagSafe magnet. And so you can see how that renaming happens is on the bottom left here. The part name is here. And so how Onshape works is that every time you build parts, they keep st stacking here. Uh, you know, they keep adding here. Um, you can stop here and just have that one part and then now start to put it into, put it into the assembly. So I can rename this part to mag safe magnet okay which is cool one more thing i would do is i will probably right click this and change the color of it to a bit more represent be a bit more representative or something totally unique so that i can establish it when i have a full big assembly so i might even make it like for example i might make it like purple and i'll make everything that's magnetic or everything related to that part or, or to, to be that color so when I look at it, I'm no, I know in, instantly that this is what it is. Okay, so it's up to you to choose how you do that. 
but uh, for now for this particular project i think gray is nice because i know that it's a magnetic material actually one thing we could do is i can right click this face and add an appearance and i can make this blue and then i can add a this one add an appearance and make this red this is not exactly how the magnet works. There's actually many magnets around it, but essentially the blue and red kind of show the north and south polarities as well. So something like that, that's actually common to do as well for magnets, right? Red and blue. This is incorrect, so I'm not going to do that because the magnet array and the MagSafe product is more like this. There's many magnets, multiple orientation on each one. Uh, so it's, it's incorrect to just have one big ring with uh, that. So I won't go too much into that, but uh, that's something for, for reference. Okay, now we're going to go into our assembly. We're going to rename the assembly. Let's call it MagSafe Mount. Cool. And then let's change it to let's rename it MagSafe Mount Assembly. So it's very clear what it is. So I, I want to get into that habit of making really nice and clean names and, and file names. So I'm going to come here. So now I must, my assembly, it's totally empty. You can see that there's nothing in, in our folder. I'm going to click on Insert. And you'll see that there's, you can choose other documents, Saturn documents, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna click on my MagSafe magnet. When you click on this thing, there'll also be other parts within that same part studio. So if I made other parts, you'll see other things, but for now it's just this magnet. So I'm gonna click okay. And it adds the magnet to my assembly. Cool. That's awesome. That's a great starting point. Now let's start to think about how we're gonna build a mount around this. But before I go there, I, I know I'm going really fast, but tell me, are there any questions? So far, so good. Cool. Are you guys following? Are you guys able to build this and get here? Okay. Now yeah. we're going to start talking about how to build. This is how I do it. And you don't need to do it like this, but I like to mob, do my CAD like this, which is I use parts that are reference parts or like so, parts that are never going to change as my, my base part and build around it. So. The way that it works in Onshape is there's this tool here called Create Part Studio in Context. That means that it's going to see whatever is here and create something in context. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to click the origin that I want this part to be at, which is this origin right here. So I'm going to click it. Cool. So once I've clicked it, I'm going to select OK or check mark. Good to go. Now you'll see that it kind of translucents that part. So that's my reference. I'm going to start building new parts based on that part. And you'll notice on the left, a new part studio has been created. Okay, so I'm going to start creating a holder that's going to hold this magnet inside it. So um, you can do it in many ways. For example, let's just do it in a way that I'm going to just start sketching it. Okay, so I'm going to just choose, for example, the back side, and I'm going to sketch a holder. So this holder is going to be maybe uh, two millimeters thick from the edge of my magnet. Okay, cool. That's it. Done. That is my holder. Now I just need to extrude it. I need to extrude it backwards, but you'll see you need to make sure that you select all of the surfaces that you want to extrude. And maybe I'll make it two millimeters thick as well. Okay. And this is kind of a random number. You'll, as you build things, you'll know what the right thicknesses are. If you're making it out of steel, out of plastic, out of 3D printer parts, it, it depends, right? On your material. Right now I'm just doing a random two millimeters because I'm thinking maybe it'll be 3D printed. So you can see here, I have this magnet kind of placed in here. That, can you see how I'm try, starting to build this part out? It's basically this magnet put on top. But right now it's not constrained in any way. I could glue it here, but nothing's aligning it. It's very hard to make this actually work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to thicken this inside face. Let's just say by another two millimeters, okay? Uh, actually, I'm going to do 0 0.5 millimeters. What I'm using this is this is going to be my clearance for an actual part here uh, that I'm going to make another two millimeters. This part, I'm going to use the Unite tool or the Boolean tool to unite with the back and this. So now I have this union part. This is a gray part I don't need anymore. When I, and I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to use the delete tool, uh, the delete part tool, delete it. Now look what I've done. I've created this inner ring with a bit of clearance so that this magnet can slide over it. That way I have a nice assembly where this part comes and slides over. Because I'm going to use uh, the assembly process of kind of sliding it over, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a chamfer on each side, maybe a one millimeter chamfer, or maybe 0.5 millimeter chamfer. That way it's a nice soft edge for my magnet to come over. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Um, you can also, for example, delete this whole interface. Like there's no, there's no reason to keep, like you could keep it, right? The reason why you may not want to keep it is say you're injection molding this part, you need to have uniform wall thickness. We'll talk more about that later, but essentially right now I just wanted to have minimal material. I don't want it to be excessive weight. So I just made it hollow. Okay. So that's why it's like this. All right. So I have a hollow inner chamber. I have this ring and it's sitting on it nicely. Okay. We also need to have it. Uh, we don't need to, but I'm going to, I want to create a housing for this. So it's nice and covered. So what I'm going to do is I have this two millimeters sticking out on the top. I'm actually going to just make it line to line with my magnets. I'm going to use the replace face tool I'm going to replace this face with this one. And you'll see why. So hopefully it replaces. It didn't replace. So I think it just, it doesn't work that well for some reason. So I'm just going to move it. I remember it was two millimeters. So I'm just going to move it two millimeters inwards. And actually, I'm not going to move it two. I'm going to maybe make it 1.5. So there's 1.5 millimeter clearance. Do you follow here so far? So you can see the housing has this clearance. I'm going to make a cap that's going to go over the whole thing. So it's nice and clean. So let's create a cap here. Let's make this two millimeters as well. Make it a new part. Cool. I'm going to then replace this face with the top edge of the magnet. So now I know that it's going to be the same thickness of the magnet. I'm going to move that face now, maybe 0.5 millimeters. So there's a little bit of clearance. Actually, instead of moving that, what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to move it, sorry. So moving the face by 0.5 millimeters. Cool. I'm going to now thicken this face and make it a new part. And let's make it one millimeter. I'm making it a bit thinner. And once I've done that, I'm going to delete the interface. This creates the top cap. Okay. The reason I made a one millimeter instead of two is because magnetic strength exponentially decreases with the thickness away from it. So if you're lying, if you're touching the magnet, it's 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 a uh, uh, versus when you start moving it away, that distance is the distance is squared. The amount of uh, loss in magnetic force. I'm going to attach these two together. Now we have this really cool kind of housing. And what I can do is I can come here on the right and click on section view and click on the circle. It'll give me the section view of how it looks in the cross section. So you have this housing, you have this magnet and you have the top cap housing. One last thing to do here is this is line to line with this. So the blue part and the top cap part are line to line. That means that if there's any tolerances, say the blue part is a little bigger, or the gray part is a little bigger, they're not going to fit. So you need to give a little bit of clearance so that they can fit. Okay. And on top of that, this top blue part doesn't have anywhere to stop. So when you assemble it, it's just going to keep going, right? It just, it's going to come and press down. So you might want to create a, a hard stop. So the way we're going to do that is we can maybe create some, first let's create the clearance. I'm going to stop the, the section view. I'm going to hide this uh, inner part. I'll just move this inner part by maybe 0.1 because I don't really need that much clearance when it's a, a printed part. I'm going to also create a little bit of a chamfer here so they can assemble. Okay. Let me bring that part back here. I can unhide it. It's back here. <clears throat> now I can choose what cosmetic I want. I could choose that. I, I have the cosmetic where there's this line that's revealed at the back. I can have it so that this the blue part extends outwards. I choose how that's going to look at the end. That's really important, right? And that's going to uh, that's going to force me to make my design one way or another. So what I think what I will do is I will probably have it so that um, this this part is kind of on the inside and you see the gray part as the, the edge kind of you'll see it as this. That means that I have to have a hard stop inside somehow where the gray part is stopping against this blue part somehow and, and not continuing on to the right. So how do I do that? <clears throat> Let's think about it. Uh, let me see, how could we do that? So probably I need to have a little lip here that extends on the, on the gray part that hits 
this and doesn't let it go down, right? So what I can do is I can thicken um, this inner blue part interface, maybe by one millimeter. Okay, and let's make it a new part. I will move this face out by one millimeter. And then I don't want it to collide with this magnet. So I'm going to also move this inner, oh, I'll just hide this part for now. I'll replace this with this to make sure that it is touching the magnet face. Cool. And then I'll give it a little bit of clearance. Let's say uh, one. Let's say point two. Cool. And then now I'm going to join these parts together. Nice. The problem now is that we have a little bit, of, we have what's called an undercut. This is hanging plastic. If I'm assuming it's plastic. And that's really bad for manufacturing because it's you have this floating thing to injection mold it. You need a special tool to come out. So what I'm gonna to do to make it a bit nicer, so I'm just gonna take this undercut and just replace it here. That way we don't have an undercut anymore. We have this kind of stepped shape. Let's bring this part back. Now do you see how it nicely hits that surface and it stops? And then we can also um, chamfer this side, just make it look a bit nicer on the back. Cool. Do you see how all this came together? We have this nice cover, the back plate and the front. I'm going to also sharpen probably this front edge as like a cosmetic detail, maybe make it two millimeters instead. One millimeter, one millimeter looks a bit better. Cool. So that's my magnetic holder part. So the back place, back the, the front uh, plate, the magnet, and the housing. They all come and sandwich together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rename them real quick. So I'm going to call this uh, back plate. Let's call this, uh, oops. Let's call this uh, <clears throat> front plate. Awesome. I'm going to now go here, insert, and go to assembly. I'm going to insert both these parts that I just made. Oops. Insert back plate, front plate, and click yes. Now we have this really cool assembly, which has all three parts. And if I click on section view again, you'll see the section, cross section, that you have the back plate, you have the magnet, and you have the front plate. All done. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to pause here for a second. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Awesome. So now we're going to make a, a mount, right? We need to know how tall this mount needs to be, because if we're going to just magnetically attach your phone to this to charge it or something like that, or maybe just hold it up for you, how do you make this? Uh, how do you make sure that it's tall enough, right? Well, you could go and measure, you know, you can say uh, iPhone, uh, say 14 Pro Max dimensions, right? And then you can say, okay, this is the dimension. Maybe I can find one where it shows me how tall it is off the ground and blah, 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 off, off of the MagSafe. But here's a hack. This is what I would do. I'm gonna go and insert. I'm gonna click other documents. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna search in public iPhone Pro Max. Now look at that. I have all of these phones that are public phones or public CAD models that I can just use to help me with uh, my CAD project. So let's just take this iPhone 13 Pro Max project. There's many different ones here. I'll just click on one, no problem. And look at that. There you go. I created, a, well, I didn't create this. Someone created it for me for us to use in our project. And this is perfect. This helps you figure out, helps you have a reference CAD for your models, right? Who thinks is cheating here? I'm curious. Does anyone think it's cheating? <laughs> um, cool. One thing you'll notice we're that borrowing. they're all, yeah, we're borrowing exactly. And then they can borrow ours too. What you'll notice is that these are all separate parts. I usually, what I'll do is I'll right click it and then I'll, I'll all of those and I'll move it to a new sub assembly. I'll call this sem assembly uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max reference. I would also do one more thing just to make sure, which is I want to check here, iPhone 13 uh, Pro Max dimensions. Just make sure that that's correct. So here, for example, it's 78 by, um, how much is the height here? 
160. So 78 by 160.8. So let's just see that. That's more important to me. So what? 78.1. Cool. That's good. And then the other height. The height. Awesome. Perfect. So it's really good. It's done. I'm going to click this. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group it all together. Because if I don't group it, watch this. If I move this, it's going to move separately than these three pieces for some reason, right? And so what I do is I click on this whole assembly. I group all the parts together. So as I manipulate it in space, as I do this, for example, if I turn it, twist it, whatever, I'm able to manipulate it in space with, with everything moving at the same time. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to turn it into place. So I'm going to move it, you know, 180 degrees. And this is where like, it's a bit of finesse because I don't have the CAD model exactly. You could sketch, for example, the point, perfect point here, but for now it's a reference. I don't need to do all that. I could if I want, but I'm not, I'm not gonna waste my time on that. I'm gonna just come here and find the Apple logo basically about center with this dot because that's my center point, right? And that is about center, nice. And now I'll do one thing where, this is where I might use some of the tools where I might just do planar mate. I'll click on this plane actually first thing uh, is i'm going to right click this whole thing and i'm going to click fix so this one is fixed it's not going to move in space if i try to move it left and right it's not going to move which is perfect because i need to anchor one thing as my reference i'm going to click on my iphone max click on sorry i'm going to click on planar mate this plane it's going to mate with this plane and you see it just goes right there Cur perfect so now it is attached I'm gonna just finesse it a bit because I look. It looks like it needs to move back. I, it kind of like shifted it during the mating process, so probably here. Move it down. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Awesome. So now we have the iPhone on a magnetic puck. Let's make this into an actual mount. Um, so we have many options on how we're gonna make the mount. We can make it a two, like there's so many ways to make this look nice, look at, make it look like your style. And I would just get some uh, inspiration. I can do a iPhone Mac safe mount and see what they look like, right? And let's just do, uh, let's just call it Mac safe desk mount. Okay. So this one where you have like this tube that comes down to a circle, that's cool, right? And then you can see that there's like a puck here. This one has like, you can put charging and maybe we want to make our design have like an opening where you can put a charging thing, right? Um, uh, and there's this style, which is really interesting too, which is like kind of this back shape. And I would actually recommend even before making your own, coming here and getting inspiration. I already had an idea of what I wanted back in, in my mind, but I want to show you like, this is, I looked at these kind of pictures to get inspiration. I actually want to make one that's actually very similar to something like this. I really like the tube uh, aesthetic. Now what I want to do is actually, I want to create a pivot point on the back so it can be tilted. So this one, the, similar actually to this, I really like this aesthetic where you have like this tube at the back and then I'll have a pivot point at the back and probably have circles everywhere else. I won't have like squares. Okay, so like continue, it continues the aesthetic. So I'll come back here. Awesome, so now the problem is right now is that this is vertical. So we need to choose how we're going to make this part actually pivot. Normally, you could say that you just have this arm coming out like this in an L shape. You see how my mouse is like this, right? Another option you can have an, you can have like a staple kind of shape. We have this coming out and down and then going around, right? I like that. The, or you can even have like kind of a goose neck where it you know, curves out. What we're going to do is I'm probably going to have like, some, like probably just have like a L shape or J shape it goes like that and down. Okay. So let's start doing that. Um, let us create uh, a new sketch, a new part, create part studio in context. So we're going to click that again. Awesome. Now let's create a tube. That's going to go from there to the bottom. Okay. So what's awesome is we, our three planes are all intersecting the center plane. Perfect. Why is that good? I'm going to sketch that tube. So I'm going to click this plane this plane I'm going to sketch on it and oops and on my sketch I'm going to create for example taking from this point out a couple millimeters and say uh, I like it to be a little angled a little angle looks nice vertical looks a little ugly a little angle looks looks a bit more natural right and then this is the bottom of the phone I don't want to go too much lower than that something like that and this is just aesthetic preference cool I'm going to now curve out this edge here so it's a nice soft curve 
and I'll choose maybe, you know, I can maybe do 12 millimeters. I like softer edges. That's my aesthetic. Awesome. So now we have this curve that's going to represent the tube, right? Now the tube cross section could be a circle, could be a square, could be whatever. And let me give you an example. Let's just sketch, uh, uh, I don't know, a square. Let's just do a square for now. A center or line square. And let's do something like this and maybe make it um, eight millimeters by eight millimeters, right? Okay, cool. Just make sure that this is hitting the center of the circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. Coincident? No, not coincident. Mid, no. Which one is it? I don't remember which tool to use here, but well, I'll just just do this. I'll just do dimension to the center zero, and then dimension to the center zero. So now it's like perfectly centered. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna search sweep. Sweep basically sweeps this face, the, this shape, along a path, which is this path. You see that? Nice. So it swept this shape into this path and you have this nice tube. Okay, cool. How much time do we have left? We're almost out of time. Um, I'll probably send you another update, uh, another uh, meeting note so we can like continue, but we're, we're almost done. So cool. Do you guys like the square? Do you want to do a circle? I don't know if uh, if you guys care. Um, right. I think we can just like chamfer the square to make it a little nicer. Yeah. I like the chamfer, great idea. I like to sharpen the corners. That that looks sick. Yeah, that's cool. So let's sharpen the corners of the square. Cool, there we go, that looks nice. Good thought, and I'm gonna just make it um, gray. So it's like nicer, cool, awesome. Uh, one thing about this sweep is that it kind of goes normal to the face. So you'll see that it's 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 not really perpendicular or, or parallel to the plane that we want at the end, but that's okay, we'll come back and we'll fix that in a second. Let's actually we'll fix it right now. Let's create a base for this part. So what I'm gonna do is okay, I need to create a base. Let's create a plane, a new plane that's off of, for example, uh the mid plane here. And we're gonna offset, we're gonna offset it. So it's gonna use this as a uh your reference. And we're gonna offset it up to a point where we think is reasonable. So you see it's not really mathematical here. You could mathematically choose exactly what you want, but in real life everything is just kind of like you, you have a lot of things that you measure, but here it's kind of aesthetic, right? So I'm just going to have this here. I might just make a nice 100 millimeters just to make it clean, you know? You don't need to, but it's good. So I have a plane. Watch this. So I'm going to now take this, replace the face of this with this. Cool. Now it's perfectly uh, uh, perpendicular or, or planar to that. I'm going to now create a new sketch. This sketch I'm going to create from the bottom. This is going to be my base. How am I going to do this base? Well. Because we're going with a circular aesthetic, I think circle is in order. So I'm going to come here. Um, I'm going to take this and this to find a center point between those two and create this big circle, probably a bit bigger than uh, my MagSafe thing. And probably it has to be big enough to hold the weight of the phone, right? So let's just make it 100 millimeters here. Nice. Cool. And then I'm going to extrude it one more time. Uh, this one doesn't need to be two millimeter. I think this is better five millimeters. Even more than that, it looks a bit thin. Let's just make it 10. Nice. And then I'll probably chamfer the top and bottom edges of this to make it look cool. I, I, you'll see that they, they already kind of merged these parts when I extruded it because it used the add choice here. I want to choose new so that they don't, they don't merge it. Now you'll see they're separate parts. Cool. So now we have this, uh, let's name them. This is going to be, for, for example, uh, let's call it arm. And then this is going to be the base, base, and then let's insert these two and go to our assembly. Look at that. Now you have this really cool MagSafe mount that you can use for your, for your phone. The last thing is we want to create a pivot point here. How much time do we have? Six minutes. Okay, let's do a pivot point. I'm going to now modify this to create a pivot point here. But to be to have a pivot point, I want to probably create a part here that that these two, how they mate. Because before, remember, we thought about how these two mate together, how they assemble. Right now, this pipe or this tube and this base, they don't really have any story of how they assemble together. We have to figure that out. We have to think about that. So let's figure out this, the top one here first. Well, we said that we wanted to tilt a little bit so that we need to create some sort of pivot point. So that's right. We can right click this blue part and cl create edit in context. 
that brings everything we've done till now into context and lets you edit it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn that section view off. So it brings this arm into the, the sketch so you can use it or this part. So I'm going to start sketching on this face. Okay. And now I'm going to create a pivot point. So let's create the pivot point. Let's put it somewhere, say here. Okay. That pivot point, the point itself is important because that's literally where it's going to pivot about. Okay. It can't be right inside the magnet has to be a bit further away. Right. And I'm going to make this, yeah, five millimeter sounds about right. And I'm going to make the, the, I'm going to make an inner tube, inner circle. That's going to be where the screw goes through. And let's just say a two millimeter screw is good. So I'll make it 2.2 because you need a bit of clearance for the screw to go inside. Cool. And now I'm going to make a, uh, make it look a bit nicer by having these lines kind of coming out like this, maybe, uh, you know, I'll just make it straight out for now and uh, have this kind of be tangent. Okay. Come on. The uh, one thing on shape is not good at is creating these tangent lines, unfortunately. So it's pretty hard to make some nice, like tangent lines that are perfectly like you, you can, you, you just need to use so many tools. But anyway, cool. That's good. And then I'm going to just attach this to this. And I'm going to just use M to uh, to do cut. So I'm going to cut away that. Now I have this nice pivot point. Cool. The problem now that with the pivot point that I see is that it's smaller than the pipe or the tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come back here. Probably just uh, make this a bit bigger. Maybe make it uh, 8. Yeah, that's cool. About the same size as that, which is nice. Yeah, it was 8 before. I will now uh, extrude this uh, sketch by say two, say five, actually two is good. And it's already merging directly with this, but I don't want that to, I'll do it in a second. I'll show you why, because I'm going to go to the mirror, I'm going to mirror this with a plane, with the center plane, and now they're both going to attach to it directly. And now you can see I have this really nice pivot point already built into this thing, right? And now we have to come back to the pipe and I'll show you what we do at the end. I'll just create some nice aesthetics for this. Maybe have like this be chamfered and just be this be chamfered. Looks a lot nicer, right? Than than just that flat. Maybe make a bit less. Cool. Nice. You have this pivot point done. Okay, cool. Now let's go back to the assembly. We have three minutes left. Let's finish this tube here. Or the, I keep saying tube, sorry, but pipe, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go back to edit in context. Come on. Add in context, create new context because I already created one. I'm going to replace this face with the back face here. That's number one. So now it's line to line. Right now, if I attach them together, they're not going to. It's not going to pivot because they're touching. So first thing I need, I need to give myself some clearance. So let's move it a bit back. Let's move it, say, 0.5 because it's moving. I want to have some breathing room. Next, I'm going to blend this and this face because I need to have an arc so it can pivot about that circular point, right? And I want to make it say four millimeters. So it's nice and fully round. Do you see that? Now it's able to pivot back and forth in place. Oops. Nice. Cool. Finally, I need to have a hole cut out here. I can, you know, perhaps sketch it here and find the hole on here. Actually, you know what I do? I'll show you what I do. And only just thicken out from here. Make it one, say, one or 0.5 millimeters. I delete this face. And then I move the uh, all, all of it. I just create a very large tube here. And then I go on a uh, Boolean. I subtract this part from this part. And now I have it exactly in the same part as the other one. You see? Cool. Awesome. I'm going to go back to the assembly. I need, I didn't put any clearance between these faces. So something to think about, you need to have a little bit of clearance. I'm going to show you, you were asking Zeki, uh, what about screws and stuff? I have uh, one more minute. I'm going to show you this awesome thing. Go into standard document, go into insert standard document. I'm going to click um, uh, ISO. And then I look, I have all of these screws to choose from. That's already built into Onshape. I'm going to go to probably, I had M2, right? Um, I want it to be a bolt and screw. I want it to be a uh, cross head. Uh, that's fine. And I'm going to do M2. And then the length, I don't know what length I need right now, but I'm just going to click this face. I'm going to click insert. Check this out. I have the screw that goes perfectly where I want it. 
So I don't like I'm, uh, I don't like this is a bit too tall. I'm gonna just X out of it and then I'm gonna try again. This maybe I can measure. I need something between this and this. So if you click the two faces, it gives you 12 millimeters. So you need something a bit shorter than that. Let's just say 16. And I'm gonna insert it to uh, not this face, just that face. And click insert. Awesome. And then I'm gonna go to bolt. How many minutes do I have? Less than a minute left. All right, I might get kicked off, but then uh, I'll, I'll send you another one after that. So we'll get kicked off um, in a second. So rather than get kicked off, I'll just wait till it gets kicked off and then we'll continue from there. All right. Um, before, I mean, I know if we'll get kicked off, but do we add the threading to the screws? Is there an option in set settings? Usually you don't use threads because it, it, it's very, it slows down your model a lot because it's too many details. But you can have it if you want. But you see, I added the bolt right now to the back here. Right. So now I have the screw and the bolt, and now this is fully functional. This is all good to go. I I, th I would say maybe you want to put a little bit of clearance between these guys because they're line to line, right? So you're going to have tolerances that are not going to fit inside. So I go here. I go um, edit in context, create new context, and I'll just probably move this face and this face by 0 0.1. And you see, I would have it all kind of embedded so it looks nice. But we don't need to go into that much detail. I can send you this CAD file so you can play around with it if you like. But um, that's that uh, on that on that note. Okay, awesome. The last thing to do is create some a way to attach these two together. That's that's it, right? And after that, we have we're we're done with this part, and then we can maybe kick it off to print and then test it and see how it goes and all that kind of stuff, right? So how could we do that? Well, right now I'm thinking maybe what we're probably going to want to do is cinch it together. Uh, maybe there's a way to like glue it down like there's many things we can do for example i'm going to just right click this i'm going to edit and create a new context i'm going to move this i'm going to just highlight and i'm going to move that whole thing and we know that the bob base was 10 millimeters right so if we do 10 millimeters it's going to hit that the bottom here so maybe i'll do nine millimeters okay and i could just do this i could say subtract this tool with this target i'm going to keep the tool now if i hide this You'll see that is just a hole and I can just make it offset a bit and, and glue it into it. And that's actually totally fine, right? That's cool. I'm going to be do a bit a better of a job than just glue because I think um, it'll be better for us to overall to like be able to test it and see what works. Firstly, I'm going to move all of the faces except for this bottom one to give me some clearance. Okay. And I'm going to make it 0.1 millimeter clearance such that it can actually come in and, and you know, attach. I'm not going to chamfer the edges because I want it to look like it's just coming out and like it's kind of part of one body, okay? Next is, I'm going to, I think what's best is to screw it in from the bottom. And I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to sketch. Uh, right now I have only one millimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give it a bit more, uh, before I sketch, I'm going to give a bit more meat at the bottom. I'm going to move the bottom face up by say, Say four should be fine. Four millimeters, okay. And let's sketch the bottom face here. Uh, come on. I'm gonna just click uh, X out of it. When I, when I X out of it, if I add any new parts, they're not gonna be added to the thing anymore. Uh, but it's still fine because I'm still editing within this this frame of for reference. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch here. Uh, I'm gonna s s draw a, a circle at the bottom in the middle, right here. So do you see how I kind of look for the midpoint here and then the midpoint there and then it lets me find the midpoint here? Cool. I'm going to make this a bit bigger of a screw. Let's just make it a three millimeter. So I'm going to just 3.2 for clearance. You see, every time I have something, I think of the clearance. I think of the clearance, the tolerance, the tolerance, right? All the time. It's never like a perfect number. Generally, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the variability in the material. 3.2. Extrude this out. I'm going to do remove. And it's going to do a nice drill hole for me. On this side, I'm actually going to chamfer this. Actually, before I even chamfer it, yeah, I'll chamfer it. Because what I'm thinking is, I'll probably just do a countersink screw that's nice and flush. Do you see a nice and flush countersink screw? And I don't know exactly how many millimeters I need. I'm just going to put three. I don't know yet. I'm going to use the material database to help me find out what the screw is going to look like. Because I have a countersink screw, one more thing I think will be used that will be useful is to create a nice base for this whole thing. So. Uh, either I put a rubber base. Uh, one other option I have that I might just do right now is just uh, make it proud. And I'll show you what that is. So I'm going to thicken this uh, and new and maybe make it one millimeter. Okay. I'm just going to move 
this and this inwards. Let's just say three. And I'm going to move this back some more, maybe somewhere here. So this, you can imagine, can be rubber, right? A rubber base, a nice rubber foot. I'm going to just join them because I'm. Uh, it's going to be annoying to make a, a rubber foot like that. You see, and now it's going to be sitting on top of that. So now my choice, uh, what I actually probably is I'm going to do, now that I look at it, is I'm going to replace this, these two with this face and just chamfer this, this face by making it one millimeter as well and just have it like that. So now I have this like kind of like opening for my machining and to all this stuff. And when I sit it on, I know that it's it's clear, you know. But I think in the in reality, you probably want to have like a rubber inlay. And what you could do there is I'll show you something, a trick. Say my rubber inlay, I want it to be proud by one millimeter. I'm also going to create a little trough for it to sit inside. Do you see? So I'll show you what that looks like. So let's just say I make it, um, I'm going to just make a new one millimeter thick and I'm going to do the other direction. And uh, and let's just say, so let's just say it's uh, one millimeter is fine. I'm going to hide this for a second. Hide the base. So this is my ru uh, rubber trough. I'm going to move this in, in, inwards a bit. Say uh, one millimeter inwards. Okay. Bring this one back. I'm going to subtract it. So tool, come on. Tool is this, target is this. Nice. So I created this trough. Why did I create it? It's because, and I, you know what? I'm just gonna make it a bit, it's too thin there. Make it one millimeter. Why did I create it? Well, because I can come in with this rubber boot uh, like this, right? I can just create this rubber sticker and just stick it and it will perfectly align to that inside part, which is nice. And I'm going to also give it a little bit of clearance on each side. Again, clearance is, is so, so key. Don't forget your clearances. I'm gonna do point two on each side. And there you go. You see that rubber boot nicely sits in there. You know, I'm putting it in there. It's going to fit nicely and, and so on. So, so cool. Awesome. So uh, let's bring the arm back. We are still not done because the arm needs a hole too, right? And the arm is kind of sticking out here. I'm going to create a section view to see exactly what's going on. And you can see that um, the arm is, uh, you know, not in the right position. So I'm going to move it back. I think it was five millimeters or four, four millimeters. Nice. And then remember my trick. I'm going to thicken this hole by one. Make it new. Delete it. So now I need to be thoughtful of how how deep do I want to go. So let's just click move. Uh, no. Let me like this. So I'm going to move this top face of it. Come on. Uh, let's just say it's, I don't know, five millimeters is fine. Let's just make it, let's see if I can do 10. You see what I'm looking at is how far, clo how close does it get to this edge, right? 10 is a bit close. So I'll just do like eight and uh, that's good. And then I'm going to subtract it. So my tool is this, my target is this. Cool. One problem though now is it's 3.2 millimeters. What's the problem there? If I try and screw it, the screw is not going to go, it's not going to cut into anything, right? Basically it's, it's too big. So. You can choose, if this is made out of aluminum, you can create the threads here. And you can you, you would go like, for example, here and say M3 uh, tap size, okay? And you'd find, okay, M3 here, the tap drill is 2.5 millimeters. That means that you need to drill 2.5 millimeters and then use a cutter to cut that rest of that three millimeter thread. I'm going to do plastic tapping. That's basically self-tapping screws. So you know how on wood, you cut into the wood with the screw directly, you don't have threads. You can do that with plastic as well because this arm is gonna be plastic and I'm just prototyping it. I'm gonna just find, okay, let's just do M3 uh, plastic tap screws, tap size. Um, yeah, I can't find it. Maybe I can go to Amazon and do uh, plastic tap screw M3. Oh, these are cool. Self-tapping M3. That's nice. And it depends on what you're doing. Like, I'm just finding this one for now, just for us to look at. 
and see if they give you dimensions. M3. It doesn't look like they're giving dimensions. So I'm going to just be safe. And what I'm going to do is if uh, if it's three millimeters now, um, I'm, I'm 2.5 is maybe OK. Maybe I'll give it a bit more clearance because I'm cutting into it. I'll do maybe th two. Let's see this. Two point um, two point four is it's a bit too much. So let's do zero point two. Yeah, let's do that. So now I have two point eight. Okay, so that's that's okay. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm I'm thinking of what is best here for us, and we we need to try a different thing. So two point six is good. I I would say. I want to just chamfer this edge as well to help guide the screw in. So basically, when you're screwing it in, it just guides its center and all this stuff. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to go back to the assembly. Awesome. Things look good. I don't have, you see how it didn't bring in the rubber foot. That's because I added a new part and I didn't really insert it. So I have to go back to insert current document. I can click this arrow and I can find that part three here. And you know what? I want to go back to uh, part three here and I want to rename it to uh, rubber foot. Now I have, I'm almost done with this mount. Okay. So how I'm going to finish this is I'm going to go here, insert. Guess what? We have these standard documents again. I'm going to find another nice ISO uh, bolt and screw and let's see if they have a counter. Oh, they have self-tapping screws. That's, that's cool. Uh, I don't know what this means. Let's try another one. Hex socket. Nope. I don't know what that means, so I don't know what these are. I've never I, I have to Google what this is, so but cool. Let's just find another one. Uh maybe it's I can find one. An ISO. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a regular screw for now. I'm not gonna do self-tapping, but I'm probably gonna do uh, I'm looking for um uh what's it called? Um a countersink screw. But I don't see any here. Here, this is cool. pH countersink, awesome. I'm gonna to go to M3. I'm gonna click on this edge, click insert. Ooh, what the heck happened there? I have no clue what happened there. So uh, let's try that again. You'll see that one thing that's gonna be weird is it doesn't really know where to place it because it's on the on the on on a conical surface. So you're probably gonna to need to do this top edge. If I do that, it should work. Okay, I have no clue what happened again. Oh. It, Pulled it up here for some reason. So I'm going to fix this as well. I don't know why it's doing that. Well, let's do this edge. M3 length. I just put 10. Doesn't matter right now. Cool. Awesome. Kind of weird. I don't know why it's in the in the air like that. I can try and push this in, but it's not going to work. What I might do is... Uh, let me see something. Let's click maybe on this edge see what happens what the heck <laughs> so you can see it's all always gimmicky you need to figure out how to use them They're not always gimmicky but it could be gimmicky right so let's try this no clue why that is happening now that's gone all right in anyways you get the point you'll you need to put the screw in and then you're done and I think that is cool. We can look at it from the high high level. I'm just gonna hide this uh, mate connector so you can't see it. Cool, so that's our thing. That's our product. I would say one last thing uh, before we kind of conclude this. I don't like how off center it feels. Do you see how this kind of, it is in the center of the circle, but it feels off center because the, the everything is kind of the front. So what I would do personally is I would move all of the base to the left to make it look a bit better. And let me show you how I do that. I'm going to edit this, edit in context, create new context. Watch this. This is going to be cool. I hope it's cool. Uh, I'm going to click on move face. I'm going to select all of this stuff. Awesome. And I'm going to do translate, translate this face and watch this. It's moving everything to that point, you see? But I don't want to move the inner faces anymore, actually. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to move. I'm going to move this outer face, this chamfer, this um, bottom face, and then basically uh, the rubber boot, this thing, 
this feature. I'm just going to uh, hide this change for now until I select everything. Um, there. Okay. And I'm going to click on translate. And I'm going to translate it forward. I'm going to use probably this edge because it's a bit better. Okay. And let's move it until we think it looks nice. I think that looks about right. Don't you guys agree? Do you, do you agree about there? I'm going to click OK. Just make sure everything looks good. Yeah. Click OK. Nice. So we have some problem here. Let's just figure that out. I can double click this and see which one I didn't select. So it looks like I didn't select some face here. Which one is it? There's something like I, I'm sure like if we took our time, we'll find it. Uh, for now, I'm just going to ignore it. But there's something that we forgot to select. But imagine you selected it, right? Everything moved forward. And that's really cool. That was quickly a quick way to just adjust it. And now we go back to the assembly. Look at that. That looks a lot more balanced to me. That looks right. You can tilt this a bit and stuff and all that. And that's cool. So so that's cool. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to unfix these three uh, parts. Um, and I'm going to do try something. I'm going to press on this, this. I'm going to select all three again. And then I'm going to go to the pivot point. I want to see what happens if I tilt it. Look at that. So you can see how it looks at different tilts as well. So I can tilt it maybe like this. Now I can imagine how it looks like that from my desk. And that's cool. I'm done. I created a desk mount for my thing, for my um, for my phone. And um, I can also consider, okay, do I want to go back to like uh, a design like this, where we have like this magnet insert. So you can go back here. You can maybe like to get rid of this and find a way to have like the magnet placed inside and, and so on, right? Cool. So I hope that was a good lesson for you guys and you learned something on, on CAD and how my workflow is. We went from nothing to like a full out mount in one hour while I explained it. So you can see like it's pretty quick to just do things. I, I would then take it and export it and start printing it. So how you export it is, and I'll show you, let's just go through that exercise real quick. I'll click on my part, right click it and just click on export. And then I choose whatever name I want, the format I want, and click export, and then we'll export it. And then uh, we can look at it. I can talk to you guys one on one. And if you want to learn how to export it to a printer, uh, uh, I use Cura uh, for most of my exports for for printing. But you can use whatever whatever tool, whatever software tool you have for your printer. Awesome. I'm done here. Any questions for you guys? From you guys? Yeah, go for it, Zeki. It's not related much, but I was just wondering, what if you were to animate and record a video of it moving front and back? Is it possible on this software? I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure it is possible. Yeah, I personally don't know how to do it. That's fair. Because I was just thinking, like, let's say I did this, if we were to make, like, a piston or something, then just animate it going up yeah. and down. So I was just wondering if it works. Yeah, there, there is definitely some way to do it. I just don't know right. how to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Look at that. It comes in black. Right. It's so, really nice. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you one more thing. Um, sometimes you want to know weights and all that stuff. So it might be worthwhile to like do that. So <clears throat> when you go when you go to the parts, you can also as assign materials. So I can right click here. So assign material for the arm. We spoke about materials. So say I make this out of, uh, say, aluminum. Let's just say 6061, uh, you know, I can click that, click yes. And what's cool is I can click this and I can uh, click on this icon and it tells you, you know, this is how much mass it has, volume and so on, in case you care about <coughs> that stuff, right? So that's that can be really important depending on what you're, what you're doing. Uh, one other thing that's really cool here is, you, for example, you see here the fillet doesn't go across to this edge because we added that curve later on. So let's do, let's click on this fillet. This chamfer is all the way here, right? And um, that curve is somewhere way down. So I'm just going to take this chamfer. I'm just going to move it all the way down to right after I did that curve. Where is that? I'm going to look for the blend. If you see it, let me know. Hmm. You know, I'm just going to move it to the bottom. See what happens. There you go. Look at that. Now it's really clean. I don't like it. I didn't like that, that it wasn't done, but you can see it's clean. One other thing I would probably do is I'd probably to just make this a bit nicer of a design, 
I'd probably move this pivot point a bit to the left, uh, to the right, until it goes to the center of this circle, you know, so that's a little bit nicer, right? So, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, something happened here. You can see it, it went backwards. So I can go back here and just, it probably is from the chamfer that I did. This move face probably got messed up. So let me just do that. Yeah, there we go. Something weird went, I don't know what it was, but now it's fixed. Cool. Awesome. There we go. We built this nice MagSafe mount. And I, the, the cool thing is that it looks good. It will be functional and you did it by yourself. Like, and literally you can get this to be mass produced. Like it's almost ready. Like there's just a few things you might want to tweak here and there. All right. Any other questions? Do you guys want to talk about maybe what materials you would assign to it or anything else you're interested in? Um, yeah, sure. Let's talk about materials, I guess. Um, well, my question is, um, since it's like uh, we we have multiple parts here, then it looks like one. I guess it would be a different material for each. Like for example, you assigned uh, aluminum for the sleeve or whatever you called it. So I guess for uh, for the base, it's we can do something else too. Um, yeah. So I mean, if I'm going to print it, all of it's plastic. The way that I right, was thinking yeah. of doing it for, for if you so let's let just instead of talking about what this one will be, I think it also comes down to the cost and like aesthetic and all that stuff. That's all important. How about instead of talking about what this one will be, let's talk about what they've done in all their products and then we can come back to ours. So, for example, this one looking at this, I would say that this back is a tube. It's not like a solid part like ours and it's probably steel that's bent into the shape. This base looks like it's an aluminum machined part right and i think it's actually what it is probably stamped and then they come and post cnc this this nice chamfer on it and then they come and laminate uh they press on or somehow like stamp this this logo this back plate is also aluminum i think looking at the color and i think that it's also uh this one's probably cnc'd i wonder what the pivot point looks like let's take a look at if we can see a bit more details on this Oh, this is really nice. I like the ball. Do you see the ball and uh, ball point there? I would say that it looks like they probably snapped it in. That's because you can see here, there's no way to get, there's no holes here. So it looks like that is a total continuous metal piece, right? And what they do is they come in from the back and really beautiful. They have this ball like snap, like they press it in. And there's probably some sort of friction that holds it in place. Right. However, if I look a bit, look a bit closely, if you see that, do you notice how? Actually, I don't think it's pressed in, because do you notice how there's a? I'm gonna click it. Do you see how there's this reveal? Revealing basically means that there's like a different. It looks like it's different parts. There's an edge there. So I think what they might have done, which is probably what they did, is this is attached to this somehow. It could be threaded. So imagine this a cone has threads on the inside and they thread it in. And what they would have done, they would have passed, they would have thread that cone from the bottom all the way up through the tube to the back and screwed it on to the back here. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, say this is my tube, okay? They took the, the, the cone, they went like this all the way to the back and then they screwed it onto the back, so, something like that. Or they pressed it on or somehow they joined it. Maybe they glued it. Did you guys follow that? Yeah. If, if you don't, I don't mind saying, explain it again. Okay. No, uh, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do you think that hole is for? Is that a functional thing or aesthetic thing? Yeah, I think it's just for the cable. I think if you don't want the cable uh, yeah, to come down yeah, from the bottom, yeah, you can get it from the top. I think that's, that's it. Yeah. And you can see the CNC design because you can see the chamfer done here and you can see the curves here. Like they came and they just CNC'd all of that out. It's an expensive, I wonder, it's it's not too expensive either. Like somehow they're, they CNC'd all of this and they made the fit pretty cheap. So, so yeah, that's cool. But let's take a look at another one, a uh, totally different one. Let's see, oh, this one. I want you to tell me, Zucky, how do you think they made this one? You know why I'm asking you. Uh, yeah, so it'll be like a metal sheet and then they stamp it, like they bend the metal yeah. sheet. And stamp then, and bend, uh, yeah. Right, and then I think the whole part was made by CNC because if you zoom in, there's like a ring shape here yeah. on the right. So I think there was CNC in the middle. So I think that you're almost there. 
I think the hole was also cut out with the stamp. They just come and chopped it off and then they bent it into shape. And if you look closely, you probably missed it because I'm sharing my screen, it's probably not clear, but this is an insert. So I think it's like a rubber gasket sort of thing that comes in and like just fills out that part. You see? So right. it just fits over. Um, so Sohan answered and also uh, Zaki answered. I'll get you to do it, Sangeet, as well. Let's try and do... Um, okay, this one's the last one. Let's take a look at this one. How do you think they made this one? So um, this one, I think the circular, uh, the top part and the base is two different pieces. Okay. If, if there's a picture of the back view, I think so. It, yep, it's two different pieces. And so um, the base is stamped and the just a CNC. I think there's a chance for it. And uh, the hole in between is also stamped out. And yeah. oh, the um, this part, the top part, uh, I think. Um, CNC. So yeah, I would say the base is uh, stamped and bent into shape, and yeah. then the top part is probably CNC'd with some CNC'd, other thing. Like yeah. I think there's other things going on there. It's a little. I think because there it... must be something that is making. I feel like this might be like glued into place, no, or think... it might have a sort of uh, uh, like extrusion, small extrusion, which just like fits into space. Yeah, could be something yeah. like. There's some sort of joining thing happening in here. This is a little complicated. It's... So do you think, think it's like uh, those bar thingies where let's say they have like four or three metal bars into it? And you know, like how you just you get what I mean, right? Like how um, there'll be like metal bars and then like how you plug in a USB cable. So it's like it, the metal rods inside and then you just plug it in like the base, which has yeah. metal holes, which yeah. could work in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think something like that. So what I what I think is happening is that you have the puck and you have the arm. Mm -hmm. You put that in like this. And yeah. And on the inside, you might have screws. You might bend something. Like there's some joining happening, and then you come in with a cover with the electronics and everything to cover everything off, and you guide the wire through that as well. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I I love talking about how we think things are made because that really really helps you think about it as well. We can actually do one more, which is probably really tough. Because I don't even know all, all the details of it. I just saw it. And I'm like, okay. I was like, maybe I'll get Sangeet to do this one. But I'm like, I wouldn't even know. But <laughs> let's talk about this one. This one's an interesting one. I, I think if anyone knows how to do this, it should be Sohan. Because he, I heard he's working on a project similar to this. <laughs> I think, okay, this one has metal inserts inside. I'm assuming. Metal or plastic. To make it lightweight, probably. So a plastic insert. And on top of that, it's like covered with like a leather but the metal pieces or let's assume metal for now if it is metal uh, those pieces uh, the holes are stamped in and the base is bent uh, using stamp and then uh, both the pieces have uh, sort of that leather covering on them and they're stuck together by some sort of glue yeah well let's ask uh, let's ask Sohan second... what do you think Sohan? oh Oh, um, okay. Oh. Um, I just wanted to know, does it say anywhere what uh, material it is? Let's assume that it's um, um, leather for now. Leather? Yeah. So, you know, the I'll just jump to it because I think we're also going to be kicked off in our second. <laughs> we had a very long session today, which is good. But essentially, <laughs> um, this is leather, I feel like some sort of leather, whether it's PU, which is polyurethane, like fake plastic leather or something else. You're very close, Sangeet. There is a lot, some sort of what we call stiffener on the inside, which stiffens the part and gives it that shape. Then you have that leather part, the two parts coming together and you press them together. You might use something called HAF, which is heat activated film, which is basically like, like double-sided tape that activates when you heat it and press it. And um, there's, there's kind of like remnants of that pressing. If you look here, do you see how there's like what we call a boss a debossing. So do, do you notice how like there's a kind of like an ins inlay around here? Do you see how like kind of goes down inwards, right? So yeah, um, there's no like bent stamped or anything because you see how it folds. There's nothing like that. There's like the hinge is basically the leather material, right? 
Uh, uh, I didn't. I didn't hear the the uh, the back part that moves. I thought it was like one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One stationary like that. Yeah. So I was like, if that's in that case, instance, probably that. that would be something that would be stamped, like a yeah. base part like that. But I feel like right now that's like two different yeah. pieces, and there's just like leather in between, and that helps them to fold. I'll do one quick ask question. Let's just say it was uh, L shape and Azaki. It's an L-shaped, imagine internally it's an L-shaped aluminum uh, sheet. How would you put the leather on top of it? Right. You can either uh, cover it with leather and then stitch it on alongside as in like how we put pillow covers basically, but like we, but we cover it with leather uh, and then we just stitch it on every side. On so like a, that's called socking. So essentially, uh, it's uh, cool. That's a good. Uh, so you actually do the stitching first, and you kind of have a sock, and you slide it over it, and then you you glue it down. And I've done that before. It's called it's like it's called socking, but it, we call it socking. Another way to do it that that we actually ended up using this was for a project called Far Future. The way that we were doing it was it was flat. We socked the entire thing into it. We heat pressed it all, and then we bent the leather and the thing at the same time. There were a little bit of creases though. That's the, the drawback. You have creases where it bends because there's more material bunching up. You see? So you need to be very careful what that bend angle is or else you have a lot of wrinkles. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to stop uh, recording. But yeah, thanks a lot for, for, for chatting today. But uh, it was really good uh, good conversation and more, more videos coming up.